For Davis Love III, the road to professional golf began as early as a year and a half after he was born on April 13, 1964. His father, Davis Love Jr., a well-known golf pro, put a club in his hand almost as soon as he was able to hold it. Davis's affectation for golf came as a result of his close relationship with his father, a man whose family was just as important to him as his career. As Davis grew, his family relocated to Atlanta, Georgia, and his golfing skills continued to improve. The only thing he loved as much as golf was ice hockey, a sport in which his dad supported him as eagerly as in golf. I think probably Mondays in the summer as a kid were my greatest memories of getting a golf cart and playing with my dad and just going around and around Atlanta Country Club, and going through the, through the bar and getting peanuts and Cokes and, and just having the club to ourselves. And I remember that was just the greatest time during the rest of the week when his dad was busy, Davis chose his mother as a worthy golfing opponent. He was always looking for someone to play with, and uh, he liked for me to go with him. Mark would last about three holes, and then he'd go back home. But Davis would just play as long as I'd stay with him. I moved here when I was 14, and that was kind of the time that I kind of broke into playing good golf. And so really all my, my levels of getting you know, significantly better all happened um, around St. Simon and Sea Island and, and on these golf courses. So they'll always be, uh, you know, my home courses. Atlanta, everybody tends to think Atlanta is, is where I, my roots in golf, and they are. I mean, I have a lot of great memories about Atlanta, but I feel like I really broke through on these golf courses down here and really learned to, to play and score um, in my backyard now. After high school, Davis made a decision that would separate him for the first time from his father, who was also his mentor and coach, by leaving Georgia to attend the University of North Carolina. In Davis's mind, this was a crucial test to see if he could stand on his own as a golfer. It was in this setting that Davis met and instructed a budding golfer, who was best known for his participation in collegiate basketball, Michael Jordan. Um, you know, practice would be over for them and, and classes were over and he'd, he'd end up sitting by himself in the room. So he said, well, I'm going to come out and just ride on the cart with you guys. So he'd ride the cart for a while and then, um, then he decided, well, maybe I'll hit one or two. And then the more he was around us, the more he wanted to play. And finally I said, look, you take this old set of clubs, here's half a shag bag, you can start playing too. So pretty soon Coach Smith said, could you send those boys back up to the gym? They're spending too much time down at the golf course. But, you know, Michael, I created a monster, basically, and, and Michael, it, it probably, that first set of clubs probably cost him a lot and, uh, and losing a bunch of bets until he figured out what was going on. In 1988, as Davis's career was beginning to take off, tragedy struck. That was uh, a tournament that Rob and I were looking very much forward to, to go, and we were all excited, so we just picked up the phone to call home and say, hey, Mom, you're not going to believe who we ran into, and it's so pretty and everything, and um, she had just, not 30 minutes before, gotten off the phone with the FAA people saying, you know, there's a plane missing and, and we, don't, we just don't know what, ha what has happened. And, um, and it was, you know, the plane from St. Simons that your husband was on. I had a great trip um, with my dad um, in early November, less than a week before he passed away, that I was going to drive over to Waycross, Georgia to pick up a boat motor that I, that I, that I had ordered. And, he said, well, you mind if I ride with you? And I said, just here we go. He's going to talk off an hour over there and an hour back. Uh, we had a great conversation. It was one of those times when you clap each other on the back and say, you know, good talk, Dad. And um, I really got a lot out of one um, in the midst of my professional career when it's hard to listen to other people telling you what to do. And um, we, um, we, we went and practiced some the next day. And he gave me a copy of his book. and, and um, and signed it to me, follow your dreams and enjoy the trip. And it was kind of like, um, he knew that something had to be done. In the years since his father's death, Davis has rebounded and become the kind of pro that would have delighted his father. He has won tournaments such as the Greater Greensboro Open, the Las Vegas Invitational, the Buick Invitational, and the 1995 World Cup. Also, in 1995, he completed his second million-dollar season and finished just behind Steve Jones in the 1996 U.S. Open at Oakland Hills. 
Yet despite this fame and notoriety, Davis remains level-headed about his celebrity status and has maintained a strong sense of balance between his professional and personal life. The bad thing about the tour is being away from home and being away from your family. But the good thing about it is when I am home, I'm pretty much off. You know, I can set my own practice schedule. I don't have to go to work at a certain time, so I can spend a lot of time with my family. When it comes to golf, Davis Love III will always be remembered as a great professional, but as far as his family is concerned, he will always be known as a great son, husband, and father who happened to love golf. And in the grand scheme of things, that's exactly the way it should be.